Joining us tonight is Pastor Robert Jeffress from the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Fox Business contributor, great American, uh, and always good to see you. Uh, we appreciate you. you being with us each Friday evening. And some good news for the president, uh, momentum in the battleground states, uh, and and uh, the uh, approval of evangelicals surging. Your thoughts about why that's occurring right now? Well, four years ago, most evangelicals were voting against Hillary Clinton. They didn't know President Trump like I did. They just knew they didn't want Hillary Clinton anywhere near the Oval Office. But it's different this time around. The reason people are voting for this president rather than against Joe Biden is his unparalleled list of accomplishments for evangelicals and all Americans, especially in the pro-life, pro-religious liberty arena. And Lou, I just have to say this. This week, we've heard from that turncoat Ben Sass, who accused the president of other things, of mocking evangelicals. Yep. You know, there's a difference between mocking Christian leaders, which I've done myself, and mocking Christianity itself. And I can tell you, this president has never mocked Christianity. In fact, we heard him yesterday in North Carolina say something astounding when he credited one person with helping heal him through this coronavirus that he suffered, and that is Jesus Christ. He unashamedly talked about his faith in Jesus Christ. And I believe this president has a reverence for the Lord, and I would just encourage evangelicals not to listen to those naysayers and turncoats uh, like Ben Sass. Well, some of the things that Ben Sass is credited with saying are, are just outrageous. Uh, I, yes. I think he's one of the most ineffective uh, but venomous little fellows I've ever seen. I, I, I don't know <laughs> what the people of Nebraska were thinking. I mean, I really don't. I, I mean, he's just, he does nothing. Uh, he runs off at the mouth. Uh, and most of what comes out is, has a stench to it. Uh, let me, let me tell anyway, you something about that, that Luke. Go ahead. Yeah, Please. two years ago, I went to a dinner at the White House, small dinner with the president and Ben Sass, and Ben Sass was falling over himself, being solicitous of the president. But as soon as he figured out he wasn't going to have a primary opponent, he decided to unload on the president, thinking this was going to help position him for his own 2024 run for president. Well, let me tell you something. This week, we saw the Ben Sass 2024 presidential campaign explode on the launch pad without ever getting off the ground. Trump supporters have a long memory and they're never going to forget that he jumped yeah. ship when he thought the ship was sinking. Yeah. Well, that fellow isn't qualified for the job he's got. Uh, the thought of him yeah. uh, advancing uh, is unthinkable, I think. Uh, he also, he lectured his colleagues on the Senate Judiciary Committee about civics uh, and then hypocritically was spewing that nonsense. Uh, th this business with the Silicon Valley social media uh, shutting down free speech, free expression in this country, mm -hmm. I think they just tore it uh, for Joe Biden uh, because this is yes. an outrage. Their power, I think, I hope uh, that Ted Cruz, who's been at the forefront uh, on uh, the idea uh, of their immunity from uh, uh, lawsuits, for responsibility. I think he is, I hope he means to take care of business urgently. He and Senator Hawley as well. Your thoughts? Well, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And of course, he was talking about the truth about himself, not the truth about Hunter Biden. But the principle still stands. We ought to seek truth and not suppress truth. And for three years, the left sought the truth about Donald Trump and Russia, and they found there was nothing there. They ought to seek with the same vigor the truth about Hunter Biden and Ukraine, and social media should not interfere in that search for the truth. Now, the truth uh, in China and Russia and Ukraine looks like it's yes. going to be quite interesting. We'll see how much of it is uh, revealed uh, between now and Election Day. Kudos to the New York Post for its outstanding reporting. Pastor Robert Jeffress, uh, kudos to you and thanks for being with us as always. Stay with us. We're coming right back.